Um, before we call the meeting to order, I'd like to remember that uh, 16 years ago today was 9-11. We need to remember our people who lost their lives and, of course, keep the military and our public safety officers in mind. So, and that, I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask everyone to stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'd start to, or like to start the meeting uh, with public comment. Anyone from the public wishing to speak, please come forward, state your name and address. Seeing none, we'll go on to administrative business. Mark, do you have any? Just a few items. Um, we have had a request that uh, some of the local um, daycares and whatnot want to like to come up and do trick or treating in the courthouse and the justice center. Just want to make the commission aware of that. That the uh, 20th is the date that they've chosen for that. As long as there's no opposition. No, we pretty much do it every year. Yeah. All right. And then um, I think uh, we need to put a. A notice. Notice out to the, oops, excuse me. Uh, notice out to the department so they know. Yeah, we'll send out an email to okay. everybody. So, and then um, I'm not spotted. He's walking right in the room. I think there was an update on some property acquisition today. Give up. Yes. Uh, action. Uh, Commissioner, of your various projects, the property acquisition for McIntyre Road is fully complete. Uh, we will be initiating property acquisition for Eisenhower Road shortly, uh, probably before the end of the month of September or in early October. Excuse me. Uh, we have a court date for the uh, eminent domain proceedings for 179th. Uh, mailings and publications will take place this week. So we are proceeding on our road. Yeah. I got your email. Commissioners, with respect to the finalization of the McIntyre project, uh, out of your budget of a half million dollars, I did have to offer $4,000 in addition to what had been awarded to the parties by the appraisers. That was to uh, circumvent the cost of an appeal process. Yeah. I'll make sure the board was aware of that. Yeah. And uh, I have notified some of the property owners along 179th. I visited with Public Works. We will be relocating the utilities once the uh, eminent, eminent domain proceedings are finalized. I hope to conclude those by the end of October. Uh, we have uh, AT&T has a line. Williams Brother has a gas line running east-west, so we may need to lower. But the utility relocations are not significant, can be completed by the start of construction season. I'm hopeful that well before this time next year, people will be driving down 179th Street. And we will be open. Oh, okay. Now on McIntyre, we will be opening bids shortly. I I need to actually check with. Uh, but no, it, it's on the. There was a pre-construction or a right. pre-bid conference last right. week. Yeah, so you had invited public bids. You had your pre-bid conference last Tuesday morning, and uh, bids will be submitted this month and open. It will take some time to review them because of the project. And we anticipate letting the bids for 140, excuse me, McIntyre Road this year. Construction obviously would not take place until 2018. Right, well, you got utility relocation. There will be significant utility relocations okay. on that. Okay. Um. I, I just had um, one other item. Uh, the budget for Thursday will be need to be amended um, for the uh, Baser Neighborhood Revitalization Program. They wanted to add two taxing entities. The, no, no changes to the agreement itself, but just adding two tax entities. So those will be coming up on Thursday as well. Okay. Okay with that. Right. Has notice come out of that hearing? The don't hearing. you have to have a hearing? You have notice it, don't you? For to put the, uh, that on? I don't budget. think so. Uh, we're waiting in the, uh, an attorney general. Right, right. No, we're just adding two entities to it. Right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could. The, uh, to my knowledge, the uh, Baser Neighborhood Revitalization Plan has not been submitted to the AG. It may have for preliminary review. Uh, the city of Baser found more people to join with them on this, uh, specifically 
the library, and fire, library and fire districts, uh, if they support that, all the better. Rather than uh, just attaching their signature pages to the agreement, since the agreement preamble references city of Baser, the county, and the school district, we're going to just adopt a new bill that cleans that up so we don't have a series of agreements that deal with those entities. Okay. Anything else? That's it. All right. I, so all we would have to do is vote on it on Thursday. The, the project remains unchanged. The concept remains unchanged. The effect remains unchanged. It's just that uh, as the school district, fire district have agreed to offer abatements to the project as well. Uh, excuse me, library. Okay. Uh, I apologize. I just got this when we sat down. That's the Tongi's recycling. You yeah, know. I got a notification of, on the email last week of a gentleman that says we need another bin. Another bin. And like I said, we, we know this is the county residents using this. This is not the city people using it. Well, I mean, I don't, yeah. Not for not. I mean, you can't. We can't determine who. Right, it's right. Happens. No, it's, but either way, it's getting either used, way, which is it's a good being thing. utilized. It's a good thing. I think we need to to see about putting another bin down there. I think so. We too. don't want it to. We we right. we've reached the amount that the board previously approved. So I just need direction from the board if they'd like to add the, another an additional bin. That's our move. Second. Voting. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you get this turned back off and on another note uh, I did attend uh, the Tonganoxie rally on uh, the Tyson project at Chieftain Park uh, a lot of people turned out people have a lot of concerns uh, about the company's uh, environmental track record and um, the company is coming to answer some of these questions for these citizens soon. My understanding is they're in the process of scheduling a town hall meeting in the Tonganoxie area. Um, they're trying to identify a location that would be large enough to hold um, everybody who'd like to attend. And okay. uh, they will public notice that. And there will be representatives on hand from Tyson, from the state, and uh, from the city and the county as well. And I, I, I will be there. Um, the board is obviously welcome to attend, but I will be there for the county okay. as well. And just for uh, the record, we do not, do we, or do we not know for sure whether the property has been purchased and transferred and filed at the Register of Deeds? That wouldn't be anything that I would be involved with. I'd have to ask the Register of Deeds if that's been transferred, but okay. that, that we're not part of that process no. at all. Okay. And, and nobody has applied for rezoning there have been day. there have been no applications there's been no applications for rezoning yeah. i have i just talking to people uh i don't think i i can't swear to this but i don't think the pro property has been purchased yet well that would really be getting the cart before the horse right wouldn't it? Well, I think that's why people are so upset because it's talking about starting to build in 90 days and the property hasn't been transferred or the, to my knowledge, the property hasn't been transferred and it, they have not applied for zoning. Well, not only that, they've got to get certain Site environmental. Plan. Yes, and that's, that's a lot of people's concern is the environmental. And they should be because everybody around there is on a well because that aquifer runs through there That's right. in that area and Tonganoxy gets part of their drinking water out of that too. But well, you said the other day, and I certainly support you on this, no lagoons. That's correct. Well, that's, that's my... Yes, sir. Could you come forward, state your name and address, please? Yeah, West Baker. West Baker, I live in Tonganoxy. Been out here for about 30 years. And I was at the same meeting with Doug the other evening. Uh, I don't know that anybody knows of anybody that's come forward in favor of this project. Bob, do you know anybody? Would you mind stating that again? Do you know anybody that's come forward in favor of the Tyson project? Yes. In the community, we have some emails in favor. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's several hundred that, that stood up the other night, and, and we 
really don't want a shithole in our backyards. Uh, I know you don't live down there and you probably don't have to worry about that too much. Well, I, I would like to make a comment. Uh, they did look at a site out in my area for the city of Leavenworth. And uh, they've looked at several sites around Leavenworth County. Uh, but as they looked, they were, they come upon this site and felt that this was the best site because of County Road 1 and close to the interstate, uh, less impact through the streets that's, of Tongue and Oxy, yeah. uh, things like that. that that's and, all great for their side and their benefit. Yeah, I'm just telling you what right. I know. But, but where's the benefit for, for the surrounding community? What's the devastation to the surrounding community? I think that's what they're going to you know, answer. 10 year impact, 20 year impact. These guys have been sued since day one in almost every state they're in. And they've lost most of the suits. Millions of dollars in fines. These guys have no problem paying the money. They got no problem paying the money. Okay? So it's going to be a contingent, continuous litigation with these guys. They're bad, they don't care. They pick, they pick, keep a, uh, they pick a sleeping community like Tonganoxie, they think they can roll in on and nobody's going to stand up. Well, that's not the case. We're going to fight it tooth and nail. I've talked to two of you. You didn't refer to my phone call over the weekend. I so just, I'd like to visit with you after the meeting, if I may. I just got if your I, email. Okay. So, so anyway, there's a huge resistance for this. There's environmental impact, there's culture impact, social impact. You know, 1,600 people. 4% or so unemployment in Livermore. Where are these people going to come from? Most of them. Where are they going to come from? Uh, the way I understand it, they were uh, planning on most of the people coming from Wyandotte County. <laughs> Wyandotte County doesn't have enough people. Where are they going to come from? The numbers are out there. You know, the unemployment is 4%. How many people are willing to work and able to work in Leavenworth County? I work at Heatron, I've been there 27 years. We can't get enough people. We hired 100 people between now and last January. We lost 104. Mm -hmm. There's not enough people. And they're not gonna drive very far for 12 or 13 bucks an hour and they don't have transportation to start with. So you're gonna see all the migrants coming up, I-70 and I-35. <clears throat> and not only do we have a diversified school system now, there's going to be 13 other languages. Are you prepared to deal with that? Tongue and Oxy's not. Most of the citizens of Worth County are. It needs to be a popular vote. You guys hold the key. Most people don't know that. Your votes decide our future. Correct? Yes, but um, that's we, there will be public hearings on this. I know, on, but I guarantee you, Every, every question that you or anybody else proposes for Tyson, they've got four well-prepared answers. They've been through this a hundred times. They know how to snowball you. They know how to steamroll you. They've got thousands of attorneys. Leavenworth County doesn't have enough money if everybody pulled together to fight these fuckers. Um, Pardon us. Okay? Uh, Watch yeah, the last Just calm down on that. Um, but what that was my next recommendation to this board or Perhaps we uh, need to get uh, an outside legal firm to help us through these uh, next, like well, development agreements, stuff like that. But well, in the just beginning, bring back the two attorneys we have on administrative leave. Okay, in, we're going to go there today. In, in the beginning, well, we we'll start out with a non-disclosure point that I brought up, and that is where are the employees coming from? There are 50 people in Tonganoxie that would be available to go to work there. Probably not 50 in Baser. That's why I've said all along, they must be American citizens or green card holders and it just should be a, in our agreements. Mm -hmm. So it starts out with a non-disclosure and I understand why everybody thinks they got broadsided. I'm sorry. Um, 
Are, you, are we going to allow this gentleman to continue to talk? After yeah, because the language I'm a citizen and you work for us. After okay? the language you that the you people. just said. The first guy that signed no, the non disclosure Let me tell you right something, there. sir. I serve the 80,000 people of Leavenworth County. And I and, and I'll and right I'll now. speak and I'll also speak right now. I'll also speak for this group and that the language that you're the, that you're using in a public meeting is inappropriate and you should you be asked to leave. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You know what's inappropriate? Bush. Signing non disclosures and not asking enough questions. That's direction of duty and, and on I'm, your shoulders. And I, and I do not answer to you, sir. I answer to this board up here, <laughs> and I'm telling you right now. Is inappropriate the language that you're using. This is this is going to be a broadcast thing. People can go listen to, and we're going to listen yeah. to that. And you're going to hear more this of this. Board is okay with you're, that. You're going to hear more of this. We're not okay with that. You're, you're, there's going to be more of this. You know, signing non-disclosures with, hey, come and get it. It started with you, didn't it? Right, I'm done. Anyone else wishing to speak on this? And. Uh, Watch the language. Uh, Brian Morley, 23947 Chieftain Road, <coughs> which is 2440. My home of 20 some years is two miles from this proposed item. I, I can't even tell you the horror that my family, my friends, the uh, my neighbors, <coughs> the people who surround this proposed property are out of their minds with grief about this, because it was all sneaky. And I can't believe this has gotten this far. So talking about whether we're going to be using American citizens, it can't go that far. This is going to destroy our entire region. And I'll tell you why. It's the 30 mile radius of the chicken farms everywhere. The smell, have any of you ever been to an area that's got feedlots? You know what this is like? Feedlots. My property, excuse me? A feedlot is different than a chicken. Uh, yes, I realize, but when you have a slaughterhouse like that that processes a million, 250,000 birds a week, chickens come from a 30 mile radius. They, and whether you guys are saying no cesspools for this, what was our rainstorm, what, two weeks ago? We had nine inches of rain. Those cesspools flow out. They go into our creek system and my groundwater, my family's groundwater, my property values. I am certainly not going to uh, use profanity. I can tell you that this is a nightmare horror for every person I've spoken to. And if there wasn't 300, there was 1,000 people at that thing in Tonganoxie Park. A lot of their people. Thank you. Do you, were you impressed by our community's outreach of each other and saying we cannot do this? That, and, and besides bringing in people, the school system, we should be so proud of what we have. This is going to destroy our property values, our community, people that are third and fourth generation Tonganoxians and people that live in Reno, where I live, and in Lawrence, they will not be coming back to live at home. They're going to say, we have to get out of here. It smells. There are flies. And I, have, I went to KU. My father's a professor there for 30 years. The, the whole corridor between Kansas City and Lawrence is a huge major metroplex. And I have clients that are in uh, Cedar Creek. You think they're going to go for chicken farms across the highway, which will be there? Because they have to feed a million two hundred and fifty thousand birds a week through this plant. So I don't I don't want any comment from you guys. I'm just saying that this is a horror, and that my neighbors and myself will be at these meetings every time, and we're going to talk about this every time. This is not going to happen. You have so many people that are outraged, and do we have a, a hotshot lawyer yet? No, we're going to get one. This is not going to go on. I am, I am horrified that it's gotten this far and, and the whole community. And believe me, Lawrence doesn't even know about this yet. It's like this is going to blow up. Kansas City, Johnson County, I have a voice and I have excellent clients and I'm going to scream. I'm so angry. Thank you very much. And once again, the property has not transferred and nobody has applied for zoning yet. I, I just, it's important that you all know this is not a, a something that's going to get pushed by. That's all. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that. How soon will this issue be killed? 
Mm -hmm. Nothing have to go any further. You guys can decide it. There's nothing. It hasn't been. The property hasn't been purchased, and it hasn't gone to zoning. So, I mean, why it's. Was there an announcement if it hadn't been purchased, and why was Brown back here to make this huge announcement? You and, don't. And, you know. Can, can I yeah. address? Let me see if I can answer. Brian's Esker, 250 Rawlings Drive. We're talking about uh, killing this and preventing it. But uh, August 28th, I believe the attorneys here helped you go through. And sir, I, I picked up some great points that you looked at when I believe you had two utility companies that uh, want to enter into a legal binding agreement with the county for $7.3 million. And we have not done that. We, but that's part of looking at setting them up, correct? Mm -hmm. So we can also inhibit the company from going there instead of and please if you're going to pay for or get on the hook for 7.3 million dollars if tyson backs out any first year attorney would argue not to put the county on the hook for 7.3 million dollars for private utility companies to make a profit when tyson comes in there so please if you need better attorneys I can give you a long list of them to help you go through that. But uh, you made some, I saw you going through the notes, reading through that, sir. We've got to look at the fine print. And we have to make sure that the county is not on the hook for paying for attorney fees if a company backs out. Mm -hmm. That's our money, our taxpayers' money paying for that. Let those privately traded companies pay for it. But let me go through. We want to look at people that are supporting this, the utility companies. The Suburban Water, I think they've changed names. The gas company. These are the companies that want this to go in. Their, their shares are going to go up. They're going to make a profit. The grain industry. I know they're probably struggling here in Kansas and in Missouri. They would love to find an industry to sell their corn to. They're in favor of it. They're going to back it. They have a lot of money. Um, but we talked about the 1,600 jobs coming to uh, the local area. So Tyson, in a phone call, said you don't have to worry about an influx to your schools, your community. I'm like, really? Well, what are you going to do? We're going to bus them in. OK. So does that not deflate what the mayor and Tyson is saying, hey, we're gonna bring all this industry or sales tax or growth to your area? And they've already done it before in other areas here in the Kansas area. So if Tyson does come in, do we have strong enough language to help protect our environment and our schools and our infrastructure. Don't rely on the EPA or any other outside government agency to come in here and help. Get a small firm to come in here and help draft language to protect us. See, so you, you bring up something that is a very important point. There isn't the available employees. They're going to bust these people in. And we have to face that issue. Well, I, I agree on the the outside an outside firm to work on the development agreement that would spell out all the environmental issues. And uh, the problem is, Doug, they're not going to agree to it. They don't want an outside agency monitoring them above and beyond what the EPA. No, I'm talking about that that we have a say in the environmental study, not the company hire an environmental study being done. Because uh, like I said, the environmental thing is, is a really big thing. So to, I agree with you, but we cannot, gentlemen, we cannot allow Tyson but, to provide that. They've already done the study. They're real rehearsing choreograph. We're peewee compared to- well, I, under, I understand that. 
This has been in the works for two to three years. I mean, gentlemen, we're way behind the power curve. We have to get smart. We have to tap into all those resources. And it's gonna be a hard fought battle. And what they're gonna do is if they, 90 days, they announce that, let's see if they would sneak it in. They're willing to wait a year easily. So busting in those 1600, that's a good point. The, the environmental impact's another point, but uh, taxation. So property values up, down, taxes, everything else. Where are we gonna reap the benefit with a 10 year tax evasion law? The governor's now going on, he's gonna take over the religious uh, something there for the uh, Trump, but uh, you've got the, the deputy governor gonna step up why don't we reapproach him and say repeal or take away the 10 year tax basin? Then you can annex and put Tyson into Tongue and Oxy's tax basin. Something to look at. Well, since I've been on the board, I was always wanted a land use study on the County Road 1 corridor, which should have been done after the interchange opened because it was put there for you know development of that corridor sure. and we do need to do a land use study and then zone that properties along there according to the study instead of it just extending the moratorium but and it's i think it's on mark's weekly updates that he's working on the <coughs> land use study for county road one but where we're at right now is a company has made an offer to purchase property under contract and nobody has applied for rezoning yet. So we're not at groundbreaking in 90 days, I don't think. I don't see how. Uh, but the well, environmental yeah. issues will be addressed and the zoning, all this is coming up. This is, this is where we're at. Last point and we can continue. Uh Fort Leavenworth has a play to this, since now we're talking 30 mile radius. I look to see what the military will weigh into this, because this affects all the officers and soldiers that come to this area, and it's a major turnover. Fort Leavenworth, I mean, Fort Leavenworth, Leavenworth County, has a huge impact. I remember maybe less than a year ago, wanted to bring Guantanamo Bay prisoners here that would be guarded 24-7, correct? This board did? No, no. Oh, no, 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 no. They were going to bring them out to the fort. But this community was a huge uprisal because Absolutely. of the potential impact. Absolutely. And those personnel would be guarded 24-7. I just ask you, who's going to guard Tyson 24-7? And, and this is where we're at right now, you know. Um, we uh, do work with the 27 committee that uh, works very strong to keep uh, the fort and bring more stuff to the fort. I mean, this is where we're at right now for people to weigh in on this. And, like you said, the, they have not registered the property in their name and they have not applied for zoning. So. The so, 90 days going to start construction. Same sort of announcements happened in Fort Leavenworth about potentially closing Guantanamo and bringing prisoners here. And all I saw was everybody in an uproar and they were not going to bring the prisoners here. And these prisoners would be guarded by the finest soldiers in the world 24 7 with unlimited money. Mm -hmm. You're going to bring in a multi billion dollar company. $320 million, who's going to guard them? Who's going to watch them? Okay. Right, thank, thank you. you. We'll take one more and then we've got to get on to our regular business. Thank you for hearing me out. My name is Ann Brockhoff. I live at 21060 Loring Road. My family and I live there with my, our three children on a small farm. Tyson is a multinational publicly traded corporation that is looking to maximize shareholder value. They look at the market, they see opportunities to expand, 
They want to sell more of their product to maximize shareholder value. I think we in Leavenworth County have a little different equation where we want to maximize our quality of life. And that's really hard to quantify, particularly when you're, you're looking forward and you're trying to extrapolate what a development like this might mean for our county and for um, potential uh, future losses. It's really hard to look forward and to actually calculate those numbers. What we can do is look at some of the numbers of what has happened in communities where Tyson has long been active. If you look at Broken Bow, Oklahoma, where Tyson has a, and, and these figures are all off of Tyson's um, own website regarding where the facilities are located and the number of employees, and the other statistics that I am going to cite are all readily available through census.gov. They are based on um, poverty data from the 2015 small animal, small area income and poverty estimates. So these are government, readily available government figures. In Broken Bow, Oklahoma, Tyson operates a poultry processing facility and also an animal nutrition facility with 1,750 employees. That is in McCurtain County, Oklahoma, which has a poverty rate, persons living in poverty, of 25.3% compared to a statewide average of 16.1%. In Carthage, Mississippi, there is a poultry processing and animal nutrition facility with 1,700 employees. That is in Leake County, Mississippi, which has a poverty rate of 24.3%, compared to a statewide poverty rate of 22%. In Hope, Arkansas, there is a poultry processing facility uh, with an animal, animal nutrition facility with combined employees of 1,250 workers. That is in Hempstead County, Arkansas, with a poverty rate of 24.1% compared to a statewide average of 19.1%. In Temperanceville, Virginia, there are 1,175 employees at the chicken processing plant with 25 employees working in animal nutrition. In Acoma County, Virginia, they have a poverty rate of 20.4% compared to a statewide average of 11.2%. In the state of Kansas, our poverty level, statewide average is 13%. In Lyon County, where in, and I'm gonna jump into some beef processing figures here because they have no poultry processing plants in Kansas. In Emporia, where the further processed beef plant is, there are 925 employees, and the Lyon County poverty rate is 17.5%. In Finney County, where they have a beef processing plant, they have 3,200 employees, and the Finney County poverty rate is 14.6%. Obviously, these figures are general figures. It's a broad brush. It does not take into account local economic factors and other job opportunities, other challenges that those communities may or may not face. But as we look at what is our future economic benefit of having Tyson in Leavenworth County, what is the overall impact of Leaven on Leavenworth County? We have to look at what the impact in these other communities has been. Tyson wants to build this plant because it will increase shareholder value. What can we as citizens, as employees of the county, as elected officials representing our voices, what can we do to look at maximizing our quality of life and our future here? And looking at these statistics and all that they imply, the services the county would need to provide, the difficulties faced by the schools, that doesn't even speak to the attendant potential environmental issues. When we look at the cost that these statistics imply, I don't think that that's particularly good return on value for our citizens, for any investment that Tyson might purport to make. So I really do appreciate you taking time to hear all of us in these meetings and and Doug, I really appreciate the fact that you were there in Tonganoxi and listening to people. And I think that's what we all need to do is to listen and to learn and to think about what we can do to maximize the value of our quality of life because that has absolutely real value. Um, it's not shareholder value, but it is absolute value in the way that we live our lives. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Um, Commissioners had a chance to read the minutes to the first session of last week. Yes. yes. I move approval. Second. Voting. Aye. Aye. And uh, the second session of last week.
Motion to approve. Second. Voting. Aye. 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 And I have uh, OCBs I need. Motion to approve the chairman to sign and date the OCBs as stated. Voting. Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, Mark, do we have anything else in front of us right now? Okay. Um, yeah, well, we know pretty quick when the Tyson Corporation is going to come to town. I'm sure when uh, they set the public hearing, they'll put out a press release and they'll notify all the entities involved. Okay. And I'll make sure that uh, if, if I see or hear anything, I'll make sure you guys. Okay, are the first we'll to know. get. As soon as that gets set up, we will make sure it's out there, newspapers, uh, on our website, uh, and we'll also, you know, the city of Tonganoxie will also know, so I'm sure it'll be in the Tonganoxie paper. I know John will report here in Leavenworth, and we will put it on our website, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, and because there's a potential that more than one of you will attend that meeting, we'll also put it on our weekly agenda. And we'll put it on our agenda. Okay. Where do you intend to hold this meeting? It, you got to get it, a place well, it's, big it's, enough. It's not my meeting, so I don't intend to hold it anywhere, but they will have to find a place. I think discussions have been either the fairground or one of the schools in, in Tonganoxie, but I don't know uh, where they're at with that. It's Again, it's well, their meeting it and they'll make sure. It needs to be a big enough place. Absolutely. Well, uh, the Chieftain Park was, I guess, big enough, but there was, parking was an issue and uh, it was a crowd. There's definitely a crowd so inside of a building. I didn't. I don't know what we got to big enough in Tonga and Oxy. Yeah. Uh, fairgrounds. Yeah, I guess that opens up, but it's still going to be. Hopefully, they'll have some way of uh, amplifying everybody so we can hear. I, I don't know. I mean, I know the schools are all set up for stuff like that. But, uh, you know, the schools. Football stadium. <laughs> yeah. They'll, again, that they'll, they're scheduling something. I don't know when, but when that yeah. date's set, I'm sure they'll do a press release. Well, I think that's going to be the larger turnout than the, the group uh, when, when I, actually somebody's there to answer questions. I, yeah, I would you think know, so. You can be into the thousands real easy. Uh, yep. I, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know of any place in Tongi that's big enough to handle it. So, anybody got any thoughts on that or from the Tonganoxie area? Because it needs to be held in Tonganoxie. Well, I've heard the school system has an issue with liabilities. Probably out. Well, that's what I, I don't know. You know, we've held some of our meetings at school districts uh, uh, for road projects, stuff like that, but nothing like this. Uh, so, we're talking Tonganoxie, but does not this also affect uh, Lovemore County? Does Lovemore County potentially have a venue that to, and then second question, has anybody approached Lovemore County from Baser, uh, Leavenworth, uh, Fort Leavenworth? I mean, you could potentially have the surrounding cities. Uh, I don't know if you're going to approach by any of the mayors or councilmen or, or officials from those areas with their uh, constituents. Uh, just preparing for a mm -hmm. Well, we will be contacting all of them, and like I said, I wanted to talk uh, to the 27 committee rep on this and get everybody's input. Yes? As far as location, perhaps the arena at the fairgrounds, I haven't actually been to anything in there, but they, they hold radios and things in there. Perhaps that would be good to have a sound system. I don't know what it seems, but that's possible. Well, we'll have to work it out. But I don't know if it's big enough. I don't think that's big enough. It's There's going to be a lot of people. Well, I know there'll be thousands there. I mean, we know that. And I don't know how we can handle it unless we do a couple of them. I don't know. Why do you propose that it has to be Tonganoxie since this is a county issue? Well, it, it seems like the uh, people in the most opposition are in Tonganoxie. I'm actually outside of Tonganoxie. If it's closer to my house, I'm in Reno. Are so it's the county. county. Right. The county is what's important to us. I don't think the word's out yet to the rest of the county. Well, it's been on the news. Uh, it's definitely been on the news. Not everyone wants us to. 
Okay, well, well, if you don't watch the news, you're usually pretty active on social media, and I'm telling you, it's there. So, yes, sir. if you don't read the newspaper, you're on your phone on social media. So, I find it hard to believe that there's people that don't know about it yet. So, Chairman, there's a lady back there that wanted to address. Yes. Is it? You, ma'am, you had your hand up, and I was trying to. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, I'm a Tonganasi resident. I'm really concerned about the uh, pollution of our rivers. There are stones throw, throw maybe five, six miles. I haven't I actually measured it, but you're talking about drainage into these creeks, into Strangers. Stranger goes to Linwood. It's five or six miles away. That drains into the Kansas River. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about the lagoons, and I used to live in Baser, and they had a lagoon system, had to get, they couldn't have it anymore. In Cedar Creek, I think, where they had to pay extra to be on the sewers. So I'm really concerned about how this 1,250,000, this processing is going into what kind of a lagoon up there five miles from our schools. And you're talking Johnson County, the soda is right across the road from Golden Road. Eudora, these independent chicken uh, uh, contractors, the way I'm understanding, and I might be wrong, that's, we don't have the information, so I really would like more information, not just for me, my grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Jefferson County, Leavenworth County, these independent contractors are totally responsible. If they're, I remember Bert flew a few years back, mm -hmm. They're responsible, not Tyson. Anything happens to their soil, a national disaster, a tornado, those contractors are responsible. I just think people should have more information um, is my main concern here. And particularly the river, river and, it, and that river goes in, you know, right to Wyandotte County, right to the Missouri River. We don't want to be another Flint, Michigan. We have clean water acts. We used to have an EPA. I don't, we don't have a cabinet person, I don't think, of the EPA. I mean, well, who can we trust? And I hope we can trust our county and city officials. Thank you. Well, I'm, uh, I'm concerned about the water. I'm really concerned about the drinking water before this all gets to the river. I mean, we have a lot of people that live around there that are, they're all on wells. Because they, they have good wells, they have good drinking water. There's no need for rural water. So. And that's why we've got to stand tight that there will be no lagoons. Yes, sir. There is state-of-the-art processes now available. And anyway, you know, no one in here has had the experience with lagoons I have. I was four years Secretary of Health and Environment. Lagoons were my biggest headache during those four years throughout the state. And they still are at the county. Yes. Because we have subdivisions that have lagoons that require us to decommission them. But over. there's a Hook difference business. between a small lagoon and one like that. Oh, I know. I understand. You're not talking about one lagoon here. You're no. talking about several lagoons for industrial waste. So, but. This is where we're at. This is the this is the, the phase we're in right now. So right now, like I said, no one has filed for rezoning yet. Mr. Clark, I was just wondering, uh, knowing what we're up against, mm -hmm. uh, has somebody had experience where we could make a preemptive strike rather than waiting? Well. We can't, we just don't know until the, the papers have been signed and the property's transferred. Well, it seemed to me like if, if, if we could convince them that some way or another that that's not a good idea to go ahead and complete that because we're not, we're not receptive to the offer. Uh, I, don't, I can only hear a little bit. And, and he was talking about ten and a half million dollars. What was the ten and a half million dollars that the county is up for? They've already signed additional agreements to, to provide some sort of infrastructure improvement. And it's all on the come. It's all what if and contingent on this, mm -hmm. contingent on that. In the original agreement, the non disclosure agreement, Tom and Oxy committed some. But I agree with you. What are our options for an offense? as opposed to being on the defense and leading an offense, what are the options to kill this through the lack of support for the infrastructure, for the potential contracts that's been talked about, until 
companies with the other gentleman brought up. What are the options that you guys are aware of for a free empty? Kill it now. What what can be done? What are what are our options as a, as legislation? What can be done? I don't think anything until somebody purchases property and applies for rezoning. But, but we can, we can, we can your do your group is 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 the voice but to the company and to us. Can we not curtail the potential agreements that have already been suggested for the utilities? They aren't signed yet. Okay. We haven't. None of us is. The industrial revenue bonds, there's no, we have to have hearings on that. But and we, can't, we can't send out letters revising the letter of intent or suggest an agreement that this will not happen. I can't that answer that in this. We're not, this is not an agenda item. I don't, I don't have anything. Who I'm just attorneys? letting you speak. Who are the attorneys that are working on this? Well, we have our county counselor, but we don't have attorneys working on that. That's what I was bringing up. If with we get to a point where we need outside counsel that has a specialized interest. Is the counselor in the room? Yes. Okay. Do you have any ideas how to kill this? <coughs> well, as, as the chairman pointed out, uh, this probably isn't the forum for that discussion. The agreements that were entered in, you, you, Accurately you back, yeah. I'm sorry. The agreements that the county entered into are conditional. They're based upon other events occurring. Sure, sure. They're down the road. As of right now, we don't. But this is very, very preliminary stage. No application for rezoning of Navy has been applied for. We still don't have a full proposal from Tyson. Once that is provided, then it's back to this board for additional consideration. And when we receive that. I'm going to insist that we have enough time to examine that as to its contents and its effect. Yes. Is it, I, the part I don't understand about this confidentiality or non-disclosure stuff, uh, did we uh, agree to 10 million dollars worth of infrastructure before we knew who we were dealing with? Ten million dollars. Seven, yes. Ten and a half million dollars of infrastructure? Several, let's say several million. Yeah, several several million. million. We were in executive session and it's confidentiality, but like I said, I support the infrastructure to be on County Road 1. I thought the infrastructure should have been put in, the gas and water, sewer should have been on part of the project on County Road 1 when it was done, the interchange was put in, but it wasn't feasible at the time. Like I said, we couldn't even afford to do a land use study, so. But if that was put in, it wouldn't handle this type of project. <laughs> well, and a, a, and a developer, I, I don't know, I can't well, say. You didn't that. know it was coming, so you wouldn't have been able to plan for it. You could have put in a basic system, right? And it's zoned. Gas, the gas would have been right. Made but up you to wouldn't handle. have gone past what the zoning would be practical for. Right, them. right. And that's what a land well, use that scrap. So that's what a land use study would accomplish. Right. Uh, one more question, and then we're going to adjourn. Because, like I said, this is not an agenda item. We're really not prepared to take on this right now. But uh, we do want to hear from you. It's a twofold question. One, how do we get on the agenda? We want to be on the agenda. Okay. The second part and of my question is, once you receive a proposal from Tyson, uh, Mr. Graber was saying he would like to have adequate time to fully, you know, dissect it and, and do an analysis and be able to evaluate it. Will there be a public announcement that you've received that proposal from Tyson? Will the public be privy to the proposal from Tyson? And what is the timeline that you're looking at? Like, will there be an announcement, hey, we've got the proposal for Tom, from Tyson? Absolutely. Okay. And be a site plan. Um, is, if that's what you're talking about, Commissioner, correct? A site plan of the whole operation. And the, and the agreement. Right. I want to see what they want us to agree to. The development. The development. Well, that develop, development agreement is something yeah. we will do. Yeah. But, yeah, they'll have 
the, the, this is a long, long people. process. And like I said, for them or somebody to announce that they're going to start in 90 days, I just don't see that. But it's got to it's got to go through the board of zoning, and yep. then the board of zoning appeals. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, the last lot split I did was longer than 90 days. So, but anyways, um, that's where we're at, guys. And we just want a public vote. We want to have a chance to say we, the people who live in this town, in this region, we just want that choice. It's it's frightening to think that that you don't have a voice and it's we can pay taxes and that's that's we want to vote <laughs> sir you do have a voice thank you you do have uh, a voice and you're making it sound like and a lot of people from town and oxy here and yeah we're the, we're going to get the front of it there but it's all of Lovemore county and you kind of just keep talking and oxy talking and oxy you're going to make everybody else north of Tom and Oxy think it's not their problem. It's a Leavenworth County problem too. Well, there we go. The, there was there was people at the park the other night that weren't from Tong and Oxy. Well, there was a lot of people, so everyone we're not excluding the whole county to participate in this. Tom and Oxy instead of Leavenworth County and Tom and Oxy. It's all of okay, I'll announce. Anybody from Leavenworth County can come and speak. So it's 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 just that it's a Tong and Oxy area deal. That we will this board will listen to anybody in Leavenworth County and outside of Leavenworth County on this issue. We want to hear people's concerns. The smell and those trucks traveling on the roads, they don't stop. Okay. Yeah. Um, I uh, one more thing before we leave. I uh, was out on 182nd Street, the one that's got 537 cars a day on it that we did dust control on. It's the one south of 2440. It's dusty again, really bad. So horrible. I think we oh. kind of anticipated that the dust control wasn't going to hold up with that kind of that kind of traffic. So uh, I guess could we have David Lugin look at that? Yep. And see if it's is that wood in road or is that the next? Oh road? no! Now we're getting on the sunflowers. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I mean wood in road. No, I know, I know. But uh, the count, the Public Works Department closed the road off. It didn't work. <laughs> It's it's the sheriff Wood End Road. I, I I did not go down Wood End Road. I did not have to go down Wood End Road. I could see what the problem was. Uh, it's powder. The sunflower traffic, you know, even with the road closed, because we didn't have anybody there manning the barricades. Uh, the sunflower traffic is a big deal, but uh, obviously this here's a little bigger, so. Uh, but we're not hearing a lot of complaints on the sunflower traffic this year. I haven't heard any. I've got one. That's it. And it was wood in road because it was just bumper to bumper again. If the pricing goes in, you won't have to worry about that ever again. The sunflowers? That's right. Well, They'll be selling Yeah. So, anyways, uh, nothing else. Motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Voting. All right. All right.